All right, hey there. Uh, I'm gonna go into how to actually design speakers. That was one of the uh, bigger questions on my last videos that I did. I showed you how to build them and how to finish them, but not necessarily how to design them. So I'll start off and just say that this is mainly for subwoofers what I'm gonna go into. The program I'm using is called WinISD. That's one of the programs. It's really good at modeling low frequency. It is not as good as modeling some of the uh, higher frequency uh, actions that take place in speakers and tweeters and stuff like that. So there's a program called Hornrest that's a lot better at that, but it's also a lot more complicated and I'm not very familiar with it, at least not to the point where I'd feel comfortable doing a video on it. So for the sake of this video, uh, I'll just be going over WinISD, mainly for subwoofers, but there's uh, still a bit of the modeling that you could take away if you plan on doing towers. So the first thing you need to do is import your driver info. Uh, WinISD does have a library of drivers, but it doesn't have everything, so if yours doesn't exist, uh, you'll need to edit that in. So here's the parameters for the subwoofer that I'm modeling. Uh, you can find these on the manufacturer's website, that's normally the best place to find them. Although there are some third-party websites like Database um, that try to do third-party analysis on subwoofers and validate the manufacturer's claims. Uh, so look around and, and find the best place for that information. When you do enter it, make sure the units are correct. You can see, for example, MMS right here, it's in grams. If I click on the little G, it turns into kilograms. Um, so make sure that those units match up with what's given on the manufacturer's website, because sometimes the defaults that WinISD uses are not what people report online. Um, WinISD does like to yell at you and say that uh, your data isn't valid when you put it in. Um, it tries to detect erroneous inputs. Uh, I found that sometimes it tells you that stuff's incorrect even when it is. So if it does tell you that, check the units and see if it makes sense. And if it does, uh, you're probably good. So start up a new project. I have two projects here. Uh, the purple is my old subwoofer and the green is my new subwoofer. It's in a smaller box. Uh, that's what we're going to be building in the future videos. Um, and the first thing we want to do is go to the signal tab here and put in a reasonable amount of wattage. I think when ISD defaults to one watt, so you'll get like, you know, 85 to 90 decibel, put in a wattage that's like close to the RMS wattage of your subwoofer, so that way you get actual numbers out. Uh, the next thing to do is in this top tab here, you wanna be in SPL and not transfer function magnitude. Uh, so once you're in SPL, you should get numbers that look, you know, reasonable. In my case, about 120 decibels. Um, Generally speaking, your speaker will be louder in your room because it's in a confined space, and when ISD assumes it's in like an open field, essentially. Uh, so next up, you wanna to go to the box tab, and that's where you can start entering in uh, your tuning frequency and your volume. So you can see as I like increase my tuning frequency, you get, you know, stuff like that. Um, I forget exactly what that was at. I think it was at uh, like 19 hertz about. Uh, and the volume. So, so uh, once once you get something that looks generally good on the SPL graph, we can go on to the next step, um, which is our vent size. So you wanna click on the vent tab, and uh, here we'll see, I've already put in something sensible, but WinISD doesn't necessarily have something sensible in by default. So maybe I'll put in five inches there, and 22 inches here. Uh, you can see that my vent length is 240 inches, just about. Um, it would be very difficult for me to fold a 240 inch long vent in a box that is, you know, 3 point something cubic feet. Um, and that's another thing. Uh, your box volume does not include the volume that your vent takes up. So keep that in mind when you're uh, doing this, because when you go to model it, that's extra space, right? Um, so you're, you're going to want to put in something, you know, a bit more reasonable here. So uh, I'll do 1.5 inches and 22 inches, which gives me 70 inches, which is still a bit large, but it's doable. Uh, yeah, I'll do 19 inches, sure. Um, so once you get sensible values there, uh, you need to look into uh, your rear port air velocity. Um, and in this case, I need to change my graph view here. Uh, so this is air velocity. Um, so if, uh, if air is exiting your port too quickly, uh, it will make an audible noise. So generally speaking, you want to keep your air velocity 
uh, lower. And you can correct some of this with filters, which I'll go into in a second. Um, but just know that when you're you know, messing around with your, uh, with your port dimensions, it does affect your air velocity. So you want to look at that and make sure that you get a happy balance between your vent diameter, your vent length, and this air velocity graph. Uh, about 30 meters per second is considered like the threshold where you'll start to hear it. Um, there are some things you can do like rounding over the edges of your port uh, and rounding over the inside edges of your port uh, to try to lessen the, uh, the sound. Um, but 30 meters per second is a good rule of thumb. Uh, next up, you want to go to cone excursion and you want to make sure that uh, at your given power that you have, um, you don't exceed X max, which is this red line here. If you don't have a red line, that means you didn't enter it when you put in your subwoofer parameters and you should probably go back and do so. Uh, X max is the point where your voice coil leaves the magnetic field of the magnet in your speaker. And anything, any excursion past X max will have heavy distortion. Um, sub, some, some subwoofers have a good bit of uh, mechanical uh, give that it can, you know, mechanical travel it can do past X max. Um, so in those instances, your speaker will be fine. Uh, some speakers, the mechanical travel is basically right at X max, in which case anything past X max, uh, you can start damaging speakers uh, and you get very, very uh, observable distortion um, just because you run into the, the limitations of the speaker's motion. So make sure that you're not exceeding that. Uh, now, if you are exceeding that, both your X max or your, uh, your air velocity, you can come down here into filters and you can set some filters. Um, these are most apparent in the SPL graph. Uh, so you can see as I turn this high pass on and off, uh, it is changing the SPL. Likewise, if I go to cone excursion and I turn this on and off, you can see that it changes the amount of my cone travel. And if I go to my air velocity and I turn this on and off, you can see that it also affects the velocity of the air because it's lowering the SPL and SPL is pressure, right? So lower pressure means less air movement. Um, so generally play around with that and get a good sense of uh, what will make a good speaker. And then it's time to, de to design the actual box. Something I forgot to mention, not all audio video receivers have the ability to create these kind of filters. If you're going to be relying on a filter for your subwoofer design, make sure the audio video equipment that you have does support it. Now if it doesn't, there are some third party solutions such as Mini DSP, which allow you to inline a small box between your audio video receiver and your subwoofer to create the kind of filters uh, that we're talking about in this video. They can even go one step further and do room correction and EQ uh, but you need a measurement mic for that. I might make a video on that later. Anyway, back to the content. Now open up your 3D modeling program of choice. Uh, here I have Fusion 360. Uh, it's just what I know. Um, and here you're going to design uh, your speaker. So uh, when I designed this, I did not put a, uh, a support in the middle of my port. But in my head, I know that I'm going to have a one inch wide support beam that runs through the port all the way through the subwoofer. Um, my old subwoofer box, I did design that in. So I'll open that up real quick and I'll, uh, I'll use that as, a, as an example. So here you can see I did actually design in that port or the, uh, the support that goes through the port. Um, I'm a fan of those. It makes your speaker a lot more rigid. Uh, Where's that body? Uh, doesn't really matter. Um, but you can see that I did actually put in my support materials. Uh, I did not do that in this design because I'm trying to go a bit faster with it. Uh, but I'll give you some, some pointers here for when you're designing stuff. Um, first off, in Fusion 360, whenever you try to extrude a body, it will try to join it. Uh, you don't want to do that. You want to make everything a new body. So that way, when you go to build your cut list, you can just click on a body, find the uh, the size of that body and then add it to your, your cut list. Um, so that makes things a lot easier. Uh, always 
go for a double front baffle. So you can see here, I have this uh, this outer front baffle that has a ridge cut into it, and then a, a back front a back baffle that's a still the front baffle, if that makes sense, that doesn't have that ridge. And that's just to give the speaker a bit of extra support. Um, that speaker wants to really move forward and backward, so this uh, front piece of wood here is going to have a lot of uh, that motion transfer to it, so you want to make sure that's very rigid. Um, like I said, generally speaking, you're going to want a piece of wood that runs the length of your uh, port to act as a support. That really stiffens stuff up. And then also internal support, like you saw in this subwoofer here. Um, if I can find my front baffle. Uh, so you can see there that uh, I have a lattice of support material to hold stuff in place. Um, so I will do that in this subwoofer. I just didn't model it in yet. Uh, so parametric design is another thing. Um, basically define uh, the sizes of your wood with a variable and then that way you can go in after you get a general design and you can tweak your width, your height, your depth uh, to get the volume that you want. Um, now uh, when I go to figure out my volume generally what I do, and I know I'm switching uh, back and forth between these two, um, this one here uh, for some reason it did not save some of my changes so I designed it like I'm showing you uh, but some of those changes just aren't currently there um, so here I have my, uh, my subwoofer right uh, now I made a fake uh, displacement uh, cylinder there that matches up with the same displacement that my subwoofer has not the actual depth, but the amount of air volume it takes up. Um, I then made a construction plane that was along the top of my port, right there. It's that orange piece. And that essentially makes a closed space. And then I'm able to go into the um, Create tab and do well, it looks kind of like a chalice. Yeah, boundary fill here, right? Um, I can do this boundary fill option uh, to fill the inside of my subwoofer, which gives me something like this. So this uh, internal volume piece here. Uh, so I made it transparent so uh, you can still see stuff through it, but you can see that it's the internal volume of that subwoofer, not including the port or any of these support materials. So like if I remove that brace right there, you can see that there's a, a hole in that internal volume and then in there I'm able to right click on it and go to properties and then over here it will give me the area uh, or the, I'm sorry it will give me the volume uh, so 1.75 e you know, to the fourth inches cubed I'm able to convert that back into uh, my volume in cubic feet and then see how close that is. And then I can kind of adjust those variables until that is close enough to what I modeled that I think it will sound how I want. Um, so now that I have a subwoofer that has the right volume, it has the right length of port, uh, I'm then able to go and start building a cut list. So let's take, uh, let's see, I'll take this, this front baffle here. Um, I'll pick my inspect tool, I'll go to a corner, and I'll get a measurement, so that's 20.75 by 20 inches, so 20.75 by 20 inches, and I'll go to my Cutlist program, which I now have open. Uh, this is cutlistoptimizer.com, seems to work pretty well, and I'll put in length 20, width 20.75, quantity 2 because I have this double baffle, right? So I need two of those. Um, and I'll enter that in. And I'll go through and I'll put in all of the cuts of wood that I need, and then the sheets of MDF that I have. And I hit this calculate button in the top, and it takes a tiny bit to think, but then it will build me the sheets of wood and how they need to be cut. Uh, I can save this as a PDF. I can look it up on my phone or I can print it out. And then I can use that in order to uh, figure out what cuts I need to make. Alright, well, thanks for watching. That's about all there is to designing subwoofer.
After this, you'd go ahead, you'd head to your hardware store, buy the wood, cut it out, glue it together. Well, I was going to detail the process of actually building the sub that I showed, uh, but my life got kind of hectic and I had to move to go to a new job. Um, so I didn't have time to record the process. However, I have another video on my channel detailing how to finish a speaker and make it look nice and shiny. So if you're curious on how I finish my speakers, you can go ahead and watch that. Looking back, there are a few mistakes that I made in that video, such as not using body filler to smooth over the seams of the wood, but that's a pretty self-explanatory process. Just put some body filler on and sand it until it's smooth. Anyway, I'm always looking to grow and improve my channel, although I do post pretty infrequently at the time, but if you have any questions or comments, shoot them uh, in the comment section down below and I'll try to answer them. Alright, well I appreciate your time, and I'll catch you in the next one.